brother. Thank you. I like I like your outfit. That's what's up. Peace be with you. Yeah, so I agree with a lot of the morality and things that you're saying, but Christianity is not the only religion that makes this claim. How about purpose, How about what? purpose of bees, of ants, uh, the creation of the universe, the signs in the cosmos and the earth and the cells and the atoms and the molecules. Christianity is not the only religion that makes this claim. And I what, what other makes what other religion makes these claims? Islam. That's true, but Islam uh, doesn't have a doesn't have an answer for sin. That's 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 only that's the problem with Islam. There's no answer for sin. Uh, I can claim that Islam does have an answer for sin. What is it? The answer for sin is punishment. Who gets punished? The sinner. Not How? So before I answer this question, I want to ask you a question. Sure. If you committed, you came to my store and you stole from my store a candy bar, and he's my son. And you were going to jail. And I said, if you don't want to go to jail, sell my son for me and I'll take you to jail. Do you think that's all loving and rational? Yes. Why? If your son was a million people, if you had a million sons, and one person had to die to uh, save a million sons, is that is that good? Okay, so you're saying that the, the value of the sacrifice is enough sufficient for humanity. Yeah, so even so, so even in humanity, we... Uh, um, we assess even so when we go to war right we assess the damage we say okay if if, if I have to kill one person like a, a general or 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 a, the president things like this okay if I have to kill one person like say I got to take out Osama bin Laden to stop a war that's a good thing that's that's better than having to go to Af Afghanistan and bomb everyone so it's, it's like that so basically create Osama bin Laden first arm him uh, put him in the media and then kill him to save people that you caused trouble to in the first place. Huh? I believe they did that too, but I was using that, yeah, I, so I believe they did that, yeah. Okay. But I was just using him as an example, but I agree with you. I don't. I think that um, Osama Bin Laden is a CIA operation from America. I believe that too. It's, it's a fact, not belief. Okay, so my question is, you said Islam. Are you, I, I, I respect your uh, your definition of a sacrifice worthy of humanity's sins, but Islam does offer a solution to being forgiven for your sins. And isn't it just better if you just ask? We'll ask for forgiveness. He, okay. God is all compassing as you said. God is multi-universal. He is non-contingent. He does not have a beginning, a middle, or an end. He's singular. He's not a triune God. It's the claim of the Quran. And it says that if you never despair of the mercy of your Lord, because your Lord is the most merciful, you do not need a mediator to ask the Lord directly for forgiveness. And the Lord will always forgive you if you're sincere and you make an effort to not commit the same sin again. How did you get the Quran? The Quran was recited in the original language of the final prophet, the seal of the prophet. The final who? The final prophet. That's a mediator. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. So you do need a mediator. That's what I'm trying to say. You do need a mediator. Okay, but the mediator is not saying that I am God. A mediator is saying it. I am pointing you. I'm. This is a textbook in my hand that I did not write. I'm just a teacher to help explain this textbook to you. And Jesus, Jesus was the same thing. Peace be upon him. Yeah, so um, Jesus was not the same thing. And let me give you an example. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'm not telling you what is right or wrong. I'm telling you the Islamic perspective. Yeah, I know, but l let me give you an example. Um, when Jesus... Okay. The, the Quran teaches us that before Muhammad died, his companion asked him, will you be accepted into Jannah, into paradise? And he said, if Allah wills, correct? That's a hadith. Yeah. So in the hadith, he said, if Allah wills. So the thing is, this guy is a prophet. Prophets are supposed to lead us to God. So if a prophet didn't even know where he was going to go, how can we trust that prophet? Let me, let me answer this question. So what you're saying is that because he says, if Allah, Allah just means God in Arabic. If you open a Christian Bible, it will say Allah, by the way. It means the God. Yeah, the God, right? So the prophet, is the reason why he says, if Allah wills, if God wills, to show you that you are always going to be in the mercy of God, that you are, don't become complacent in yourself, that you think that you're good enough of a person that you don't have to strive any harder. Don't think that you're bad enough as a person that you're destined to hell. It gives you always a route and always a chance that you, until you die, you always strive to do better. But it doesn't give you assurance. That's not love. So if God, if God loves me, right, because this is the biggest decision ever. So the thing is, we live in, 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 in anxiety, hoping that when we stand before God, he's going to accept us in. A loving God would, guarantee, would give us a guaranteed map or a guaranteed way to get back to him. Because other than that, you're living your whole life in anxiety. You're, you're living your whole life not knowing for sure. That's kind of subjective because to say that practicing Muslims are living in anxiety is false because there's, there's uh, researchers, qualitative, quantitative, that's saying that religious, religious people, Christian, Muslim, uh, uh, 
Judaism, they have some of the most inner peace in their lives. So I wouldn't say that Muslims are anxious because they don't know where they're going. They're, they're just striving to please their God. They're striving to please, they're doing good deeds, they're doing charitable deeds, they're making, they're building bridges with their Christian brothers. For what? To please God. To please God. Because if you stop pleasing God and think that you're set and you're established, you won't strive for more. But how do you know, how do you know you're pleasing God when you're doing that? Does can Allah talk? Does Allah talk to Muslims? One hundred percent. Because in the Bible, the New Testament, the Old Testament, well, mostly the New Testament, there's there's recollections written by others about what Jesus said. That Jesus, peace be upon him, said this: "I am the Word. I am this. I am that." But the Quran does not say Muhammad saying that Allah said this. He said Allah speaking directly to you in first person, writing a personal letter to you. It's I, me, you. And he tells you exactly how to please him. And he says, if you live this way, I guarantee you inner peace in this world where you don't have to go around convincing people because you're on the truth. Okay, but does he go to, so that means, so does he go to, do you go to heaven? Inshallah. Yes, and so that, I believe that's, that's a lack of love. Because God should be, it's, it's God, so heaven is God's home. So he should be able to tell you how to get there. It shouldn't be, it's just like if you said, hey D-Dog, yeah, how do I get to your house? Uh, make a left. I would say, make a left, make a right, turn here, and you'll be guaranteed you're going to come to my house, right? God is God is, is that direct too. He's going he's gonna to give you a guaranteed way to get there. And then it's also it's unjust because Allah says he's going to weigh your good deeds and your bad deeds. That's an unjust operation. That's not, that's, not, that's not what the Quran and Islam says. Islam says that you will never ever have more good deeds than bad because mankind is sinners. And you will never be able to bargain with God. You will never be able to have more good deeds than bad because you cannot do enough good deeds to pay for the blessing of eyesight. Eyesight alone is such a good blessing that you can never ever repay God for something as simple as eyesight. So it says you will never be able to make a deal with God. He's greater than you. And the reason you're saying he's unjust is because he doesn't guarantee heaven to believers. That's, that's unjust because if you guarantee heaven to someone like Hitler, for example, who million, massacred billion, millions of Jews in the name of Christianity just for being a Christian, then there is a justice. Muhammad did the same thing. He, he massacred 500 Jews. Oh, man. Okay, so... So, so, uh, so did he let Muhammad in? Because the, uh, if, if, if Hitler slaughtered a whole bunch of Jews, so did Muhammad. So did Muhammad get, get in it? So, so by your definition, Muhammad doesn't deserve heaven. And that goes back to my original point. Well, then why would God send a, a prophet like that and that's probably why he said, hey, Muhammad, are you going to heaven? He's like, I don't know, because he killed 500 Jews, just like Hitler did. And that's why we need a, we need a better system. We need a way to be forgiven. We need, because so, the Bible says that uh, Jesus Christ, right, is the, is the punishment for the world's sins. So therefore, no matter, and you can't, you're right, there's no good deeds that can outweigh your bad deeds. So someone, God, in his love, in his infinite love, takes on the punishment for us and allows us to go free, gives us his Holy Spirit, and we live according to his law, through his Holy Spirit because he gives us the power to do so. I have a question for you. Yeah. What is the punishment in tre for treason in World War II? Death. What did the Jews do to the treaty that they signed? Which one? The Treaty of Medina. When the no, no clue. Okay, so you're speaking about something you're not qualified to speak about. No, uh, so you're saying it's okay to kill 500 Jews. Is that, that's, that's the excuse you're trying to make? No, I'm asking you what is the punishment for treason? Okay, so why? Why? Tell me. So th those 500 Jews, who's authority were they under? They made a treaty. The same way that you and I made a treaty in Canada to not break laws. Why'd they make a treaty? They made a treaty so they could live together in a just and lawful Who state. forced them to make the treaty, bro? Was it a force or was it a choice? It wasn't a choice. So what happened is, is, the, is the army conquered them. Like, you, if you want, you, you thought I didn't know. Wait. The army conquered them, right? It even says in the Quran, right? Fight. Fight until they give them the jizya. So after the, after the, the militant um, army of Muhammad conquered the Jews, um, what happened was, is he said, okay, now, now that, now that I'm, I'm basically your king, I've, I've, I've forced you to come into the kingdom. This is what I expect from you. So they, they signed that uh, treaty under duress. They didn't want to, and so they rebelled because it was, it was, they were forced to do something. Okay, so you're once again making a claim, and you're said, I think, or this is what happened. You're, there's objective historical documentation that they were allowed. The Jews who signed the treaty were able to rule and follow their own courts, their own systems. And the jizya was less than the zakat. But after they were conquered in war, that's the whole point. He conquered them in war. Listen, you're making a mistake. You're in the timelines wrong. When Muhammad peace be upon, went to the Medina, he was kicked out of Mecca. He went there and he said, if we don't unite, they're going to, we're going to both be, have a common enemy. And did the Jews want to unite with them or did they say no? 
they said we get to we get to have our own laws we get to have our own things we get to have your protection we get to, we get your guarantee that if we go poor you pay for our taxes hell yeah heck yeah no that was that was forced upon them bro oh, they did, no, so no, the no, thing no. is Jew, the jews worship yahweh and they yahweh is Allah. And, and no, no yahweh is not a law no no yahweh is not a law so the word allah in hebrew means curse did you know that want me to show you that's what i'm trying to say you don't understand so the the, the bible was written in hebrew and the word Allah, A-L-A-H, means curse in Hebrew. So it's, it's not the same God, it's not the same name. The word Yahweh means Lord, I am. So th those are two different people. You're speaking of the English language. I'm saying Allah is not a Hebrew word. It is an Arabic word based on the God. Just like Islam is not Muhammad followers, Muhammadans, like Christ, Christian, Judaism, Judas, Confucius, Confucius. Muhammad is not Muhammadans. We're not, Allah does not mean the curse. Allah is a name. Why is Allah in the Bible? It's it is. It's, it means curse. No, Do you want me to show you the word Allah in the Bible and, and to show you the Hebrew correlation to it? The word Allah in Hebrew, which the Bible is written in, means curse. So it can't mean God. It means curse. Elo, you can call. We call in the Bible. He's called Elohim. He's called. He's called Yahweh. He's called Yahshua. Yahushua. Yeah, absolutely. There's no Allah in the Bible at all. The only time Allah is mentioned, he's it's it's uh, it's in the form of Allah. He's, uh, it, it's using in the context of a curse. Okay, one second. So before we talk about the Bible, like I respect, I read the Bible cover to cover many times. I respect it, and I respect your religion, and I will never impose my religion over you, but I want to correct to one thing. If you open an Arabic Bible, which I have because I can read Arabic, the Father, God, is written as Allah in Arabic, because Allah is an Arabic word, not a Hebrew word. In an Arabic Bible, Ask Arabic, Muslims, and Palestine, what do they call their God? Can you can you read Greek? I can't read Greek, but a lot of scholars of every religion and every science can read Greek. Okay, so, um, the thing is, so, Allah was already a person before the before Muhammad took over the land. He was a God that the uh, the Petra, before that, that land, before it turned into Medina and Mecca, it was called Petra. And, and Allah was a, a, a moon God along three other female gods. When Muhammad came and he took over the Kaaba, he, he combined all the gods to one and he named the, the supreme god Allah. The word Allah doesn't even mean God. Ilaha means God. Why? What does Ilaha mean? Why is Allah in the Arabic Bible as God? Why? I just told you. No, Allah is I refer to as God, the God. It says... Uh, Who wrote the Arabic Bible? Christians. Christians, Arabic Christians. Are you going to discriminate against Arabic Christians? Because no, this is what I'm going to say. They, they, they were... Yeah, they were conquered. One second. One, one second. They were conquered. So they, they, these Christians were conquered by um, um, Arab people. And what they did is say, hey, this is what this word means. And they put it in the Bible. I just said, what's the word ilaha mean? Okay, before we even get into that, you're not... Because that's two words for God. How come, how come you don't say ilaha? How come you say Allah? Because Allah is the Arabic way of saying the God. So what is ilaha? Ilaha is just another variation. It's another, it's another... No, because Allah is his name and, and ilaha means God. Arabic? I'm an expert in religious studies, and th this is what this means, because because it, 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 and you know your language, so um, okay. Well, if you know the language, you understand that ilaha means God. So you have to ask yourself, why do they change? Why do they go from ilaha to Allah? Because of the those are two different. The, one is a name, the God, and one is God. And also, there's a Greek word inside the Quran. Asu. I mean, because you're saying it was written in Arabic, but how did the Greek get in there? The word asu. Or the word, sorry, the word Issa is a Greek word that, that comes from Zeus. So how did Issa, the word Issa, get into an Arabic Bible? You have to ask yourself all these things. The real name for Jesus is Asu. So just like they corrupted the Quran and put fake, uh, uh, put um, Issa in there, and that's not his name, his name is Asu, the same way they corrupted it and they put Allah in there instead of Ilaha. So I have a question. So are you saying that every Arabic Christian in this world that doesn't live in Arabia, who was just born into Arabic, pre-Islam, pre-whatever, Semitic people, they're speaking the wrong language. They're, they're using the wrong name to describe God. Yes, they are. It's a bad translation. That's exactly what I'm saying. So, do you, can you speak Aramaic? No. Aramaic was the language of Jesus, peace be upon him. Good. You don't have his language. How do you believe the Bible? Okay, so are you saying that God only speaks one? How many, how many languages does God in invent? Listen, God taught man how to communicate through language. I agree with you. We both agree. Yeah. But I'm saying that the language of Jesus and the Injil, the gospel, was Aramaic. You don't even have any manuscripts of Aramaic. We have manuscripts of Arabic carbon-14 dated in non-Muslim countries such as Birmingham and Europe, which can date back to Quran to the life of the Prophet. And it has not even a single comma or quotation out of place. 
You, you have 36 different Qurans. So you got the Hars, you got the Wars. Okay, what is it? Hars and Wars. Okay, if I tell you I can't or I can't, is it a different word? That, so there was no diacritical marks either. Who put the diacritical marks in there? If you look at Hadith sciences, the Quran has been preserved in each of its dialects and the writing of um, the original Arabic, what are, the, what are the names again? The, uh, the Bedouins of the time of Makkah Medina, their Arabic, it's, it's preserved today. And any Arab was the original Quran, did the original Quran have diacritical marks? The original Quran was recited. Did it have, did it have diacritical marks? Yeah. No. That's why it's been changed. It, it, okay, I know. Did the original Quran, how it was written down through Uthman and through, through the scholars, did it have diacritical marks? Okay, but the okay. Let me ask you something. Is there? Can you meet a Christian in this world who has memorized the Bible cover to cover? So, so you're just not going to answer? Okay, so you you said it hasn't been changed. So I'm going to ask you again. Was the did the original have diacritical marks? Okay. When I say the Quran hasn't been changed, I'm saying it's 114 surahs. The first one is Al-Fatiha, the last one is Al-Nas. And you can find that in any country, in any place in the world. Who added the diacritical marks that haven't been changed? Tribes of Arabic. Arabic. So, so they changed it and add diacritical marks. Tell me, why Why did they add the diacritical marks? You understand that adding diacritical marks doesn't change the meaning of the word. It does not change the message at all. Did God tell them to add diacritical marks? God said the Quran has been recited for you easily for you to understand. Memorize. Did, he, did he tell them to add, to add diacritical marks? Because that's a change. That means someone said, you know, God gave us a perfect book, but I'm going to add diacritical marks. Oh, I have a question for yeah. you. So by, by your line of reasoning, do you denounce Islam because the book has been changed by your standard? No, actually, I denounce is Islam because nobody in the book of, um, in the Quran met Jesus. And they and they changed the message. Okay. So you can't change. You can't. You can't come 400 year, years later, never meet the dude, never have any interaction with him, and say the people that rolled with him, the 12 dudes that rolled with him, were wrong. And this this is the truth. Okay. So that's why I reject it. Okay. So you reject the Quran based on the Bible. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, what standard do you hold the Bible to be true? The Quran. Wait, that's a contradiction. No, it's not. The Quran validates the Bible, but the Bible doesn't validate. The Bible calls the Quran a false book. The Bible says, if a, it said, if an angel from heaven preaches any other, any other gospel than the gospel that we have preached, let that person be a curse. Muhammad spoke to an angel, and he, and he, and he preached another gospel, uh, the gospel that, that has nothing to do with uh, being saved by Jesus Christ. So the Bible says Muhammad is cursed. Um, but however, the Quran says that Muhammad has given um, the, the Jews the Torah, he has given the Christians the Injil, let them judge by it. And he says that the words of, of Allah can't be changed. So our book, and so that means we have to, he, he, Allah tells us the reason within our book. And our book says that Muhammad is a false prophet. So, so, but the, but the Quran says that the, that the book is, that the, the Bible is, is accurate and we should judge by it. So that's why, that's another reason why I check Islam, because the Quran uh, validates the Bible, but the Bible doesn't validate the Quran. Okay, so my, I, I do respect your opinion, and you're free to feel that I can never change your opinion, right? My opinion can be changed, right? I can change my opinion based on evidence. But, the, but this, is, this is what the Quran actually says, so it's not an opinion. No, no, no. The thing is, what you're claiming about the Quran, the Quran, the, the Bible itself never says Muhammad is a false prophet. It says that this is the word, and even Jesus himself claims that I cannot tell you everything now, and there'll be one to tell you more later, right? And I'm saying that I do respect the Bible, and I believe there's a lot of truth in the Bible. But I also believe that King James, who standardized his Bible the most? Why his? Why is his Bible the most standardized? Who is King James? Have you ever read the biography of King James? You know that he was actually committing adultery in Islam. I have no clue what King James did. Okay. Um, King James, no, so King James, he authorized 72 scholars. Uh, no, actually, I think it was more than 72. 150, 171 scholars to translate the yeah, scribes to translate King King James didn't speak Greek he didn't speak so he didn't even have nothing to do with it all he did is, is fund it he's the producer he's like hey go do this and it's really it's not the King James version it's actually the authorized version um, later on they, they slapped King's name, King James name on it but it's really it's just got the authorized version and we have so many textual uh, variants that we have so much that we could text, textually criticize all of our scriptures to see what uh, was there in the beginning what was added later on so we have so we have so many different scriptures that we can pull from we know what's true we know what's not okay. based on that line of reasoning I respect it you said that your scriptures have variances from one another I can't commit my life to something that has variance that was a mistake of the hand of man so it's, it's not a mistake so what it is, is, is I believe is that um, certain people had more information than other people. So if, if, if this first century person wrote something, he knew more because he was closer to the situation than the next person. And then things get lost. 
and human beings are silly. Human beings will be like, well, you know what? This, this, it, this is in this text, but it's not in this text. So maybe it doesn't belong there. That's human error. But the fact that it's there means it belongs there. Okay. And it never changes the message. The message is always the same. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ died for, this, died for our sins, and he's the only way to heaven. The okay. subject and the context never changes. Okay. Do you celebrate Christmas? No. It's pagan. Okay, so what I'm saying is, we believe in an original Christianity, right? Muslims believe in an original Christianity. What's original Christianity? It's called the Gospel, right? And we believe that there's a lot of truth in the Bible, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, is a prophet of God, is even in Islam called Ru Allah, soul of God, right? We believe all of that. Yeah, we don't, we don't uh, discriminate against any prophet. We don't say that he was good, he was bad. I'm sure the Bible has many stories of prophets which he would say, you know, uh, lots, so I kind of kind of sussed out by that, right? But we don't discriminate because these are prophets, prophets are, are are not perfect. Yeah, they're not they're not God. And I'm saying that if you base your belief on the Bible, which you say had more people knowledgeable in the first century, less than the other, that means that the Bible is not the word of God, but the word of men who was around Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and based their writing based on their what they saw, what they heard, right? That's not what the Bible says. And that's not what the Quran says either. The Quran says it's actually the word of God. And the Bible says that holy men were inspired by God or holy men um, were inspired by God and they wrote down what God inspired them and wrote down. Uh, the word inspired in Greek means God breathed. So our scriptures are breathed from God. They come forth from God's mouth. Okay, so you don't celebrate Christmas. I guess you don't celebrate Easter. No. You don't celebrate that? No. It's so pagan. It's pagan. Do you, do you do the Sabbath? I agree with that. Uh, so Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. Sabbath, it, yeah, it means stay, it means be holy, right? Yeah. But Jesus said every day we should be holy, not just one day of the week. Okay, okay so w what we say is that when Christians follow their book as it was intended to be followed, and when Jews follow their book as they were intended to be followed, leave them alone. Amen. And, and Islam says, you're not a judge of people. You can't say who's going to heaven, who's going to hell, only Allah knows. And my, my last question is, like, we consider worshiping Jesus, right? Respectfully, as respectfully as I can, uh, attributing partners with God, breaking the first commandment. Uh, but you, I, I understand that. But you, you, so you make you make several partners with God. You, you make Muhammad is a partner of God. It, the Quran is eternal, and it's a book. How how is how is God? How is Allah eternal and a book eternal? That's making partners with. Now let me ask you a question: Can I become a Muslim without saying the Shahada? Can I, wait, can, that's my question. Can I become a Muslim without saying the Shahada? Okay, Amen. Now in the Shahada, I gotta in the Shahada, in the Shahada, I gotta recognize Muhammad as as the last messenger, or I can't be Muslim. So that means I can't just believe in Allah. I have to recognize Muhammad as well. That's actually making a partner with Allah. I can't just say I believe in Allah now I'm Muslim. I also have to believe that Muhammad is the last person, and he's just a human being. Why do I gotta believe in him too? That doesn't make any sense to me. You know why the Shahada is organized this way? Because in the time of Arab, uh, Medina and Mecca, there were people who were saying that, okay, your God must be true because we keep losing and you keep winning. And then they said, thanks. And when, and when they asked them, do you, why do you not accept the, the law that the Prophet is beginning bringing, which is just reiterating the same message as Jesus, peace be upon him, as Abraham, peace be upon him, as Moses, peace be upon him. It's not true. It is. What does Injil mean? Okay, so Moses, Moses brought the law. Noah saved the world, right? They, they, they all had specific purposes. David brought the Zabur. Right? What did Jesus do? What, tell me what do you know what the NGO, tell me what NGO means? NGO means gospel. Jesus came to the children of Israel. No, what is it? It doesn't mean gospel. What does it mean? Uh, so all you did the word. No, it doesn't mean that either. Okay, you define what NGO means. It means good news. Okay. Okay, so 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 No, yeah, so so gospel is a is the English version of NGO. But it, but gospel also means good news. Gospel means good news. So you know there's definitions for words. The definition for gospel is good news. The definition for Injil is good news. So I'm just giving you the definition. Now, I have a question. If, if Jesus brought a different, or if Jesus brought the same message, Tawheed, that everyone else brought, how come they didn't call it Tawheed? They called it Injil. What's the good news? This is a language. So you're, okay, let me, let me explain something to you. Jesus, he's here upon him. He brought the message. He, he called people to worship God, right? Right? That's not what the Quran says. It says he brought the Injil. No, 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 so no, no, what's no. the Injil? Oh, there's a verse. There's a, there's a chapter called Mary. Mary. I'm True. Not. But he also brought the Injil. You got to answer that part. Okay, what, okay. what is the good news? Let me get to that. Let okay. To that. I, I promise I'll get to that. Okay. So the Quran talks very in depth about Jesus. Peace be upon him. Mary. May God be pleased with her. And it really elevates their status. And it says that they are among the best to ever walk earth. Right. And it says Mary, mother of mother, Jesus, son of Mary was a prophet of God. 
he brought the word, he paid charity, and he taught the way, right? The way to where? The way, the way to lead to God. How is that? The following the law. Fo following what? The following the law that he brought. He brought the word. He so if we fo if I follow the law, I'll find God. If you follow the law of Jesus Christ at the time when he came to the Jews and to Palestine, you that was the way because that was the to problem. heaven. That was the way to heaven. Okay. So Christians had a guarantee how to get no, to heaven. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Okay. That's I can I can say that if you try your best to strive by that law, which is the same law that Muslims follow today, you're in a better place. Yeah, but it's the way. So the thing is, God doesn't uh, God doesn't play with words, right? He's very He's very calculating and precise with words. So if He says the way, that means he, it leads you somewhere. Because we also say Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man will come to the Father except for by the Son.